The average person would need to work full time for over a million years and they still wouldn't be as wealthy as Elon Musk. As of mid 2020, the notorious Tesla and SpaceX entrepreneur is now the fifth richest person on the planet. It's been a wild ride climbing to those heights from living on just $1 a day. Musk now earns more than the revenue of entire countries. So how does a man with infinitely deep pockets spend his hard earned cash? Sure, he's got a pimp and real estate portfolio and a car collection to make any motorhead jealous. But as you're about to see, Elon keeps his spending very much in check. Sorry? You're Elon Musk? I am? For a man whose name is synonymous with Tesla, you would expect Elon Musk to steer clear of any competing car companies. You'd also assume that he would blatantly refuse to drive any traditional gas guzzler, right? Well, surprisingly, that is not quite the case. The billionaire might not splurge on yachts, private islands, or wild parties, but he can't turn down an exceptional four-wheeler. Especially if they can drive underwater. Oh, don't worry, we'll circle back to that one. Musk bought his first car, a second-hand 1978 BMW 320i, for just $1,400 in 1994, and his wheels have only gotten more impressive since. When he's not trying to make the world a better place, or sending out cryptic tweets, or naming his child, uh, this, he's showing off his mouth-watering car collection. Sitting in his garage, you will find a classic Ford Model T, the first attempt at a mass-produced car, which amazingly sold for just $850 back in 1920. Still classic, yet far more modern, is his E-Type Jaguar Roadster from 1967, which can sell for over 100 k Throw in a 1997 McLaren F1 worth over $800,000, as well as a 2006 Haman BMW M5, a 2010 Audi Q7, and a 2012 Porsche 911 Turbo, and it's clear that this trailblazer doesn't mess around. When asked which car he drives the most, Musk admitted it was his Tesla Model S, which would cost the typical consumer upwards of $85,000. Of course, when you own the company, a couple of lucrative discounts kick in. Then there's the Cybertruck, Musk's RoboCop-style futuristic pickup, which will cost upwards of $39,000. Rewind about a decade, and Elon sat behind the wheel of Tesla's first electric car, the Roadster. This sleek piece of automotive art was actually based on the chassis of a Lotus Elise, which, yep, you guessed it, Elon Musk owns too. But not just any Lotus Elise, a customized amphibious prop car from a James Bond film. Dubbed Wet Nelly, the prop vehicle cost $100,000 to build and nearly $920,000 to buy. Ever since Musk saw it transform into a submarine in The Spy Who Loved Me, he wanted one for himself, and when you're a billionaire, it's pretty easy to get what you want. All right, that is a heck of a lot of cars, but fortunately, the tech entrepreneur has no shortage of storage space. Elon's real estate portfolio is truly something to marvel at, tallying close to $100 million in total value. Shall we take a look? Despite taking a pledge to sell off all of his homes, with seven of his houses then officially put up for sale, that doesn't mean that we aren't going to take an exclusive tour of his stunning mansions. Musk bought his first piece of Bel Air real estate in late 2012, sitting right here at 10911 Shalon Road. It set him back a whopping 17 million bucks. And you can bet your bottom dollar that it comes jam-packed with all the bells and whistles money can buy. The colonial-style seven-bedroom, nine-bathroom Bel Air pad features a dedicated kids' wing, two-story library, a theater, two-room guest suite, a tennis court, a colossal wine cellar, a pool, a gym, and a much-needed five-car garage. Clearly a fan of the area, Musk snapped up another two houses on the same street, including one for $6.75 million in October of 2013, which he ended up using as a private school for his kids. A couple years later, he coughed up $20 million for another ranch-style house and $24.25 million in 2016 for a 9,309-square-foot mansion. Those weren't holiday homes or beachside getaways. They sat on the adjacent street in Bel Air. Throw another two reported mansions in the Los Angeles area onto that list, and we start to see a clear pattern. Considering that the Tesla factory is located further north in Fremont, California, Elon does need somewhere to sleep when he's up to his eyeballs in work. And while he has admitted to sleeping on the floor of the factory's conference room, he does hold the keys to a nearby house, or more like a nearby palace. In typical billionaire fashion, in 2017, Elon went out and bought a 100-year-old 16,000-square-foot Mediterranean-style mansion in the ritzy San Francisco Bay Area suburb of Hillsboro. How much are we talking here? A sly $23.4 million. That's an astounding real estate portfolio, and it doesn't even include the famous, temporary, boomerang-shaped house in Brentwood. 
Classic cars, amphibious roadsters, and $100 million worth of houses? That's as impressive a list as any. But getting to this point of ludicrous spending wasn't easy. Let's rewind. How exactly did Elon Musk go from living on a dollar a day when he moved to Canada to establishing himself as one of the world's most influential and wealthy business people? His remarkable rise to the top started decades ago. Before he amassed a $75 billion net worth, Musk was hammering out successful projects as a teenager back in South Africa. By the time he was 12, he'd already coded, built, and sold a video game called Blaster, raking in $500. His entrepreneurial spirit was always evident. At Queen's University in Canada, Musk quickly picked up a side hustle selling computer parts and custom-built PCs. After moving to the University of Pennsylvania, he then turned his house into a speakeasy on the weekends, charging $5 at the door, which covered his tuition costs. A brief stint at Stanford capped off his studies. However, ironically, Elon has since overtly declared that college is, quote, basically for fun and not for learning. In 1995, after leaving college, College behind, he and his brother founded Zip2, essentially an online version of the Yellow Pages. They started it with $28,000 in startup cash from their father and sold it four years later for a whopping $22 million. From there, Elon's wealth exponentially grew. The Zip2 money was used to create X.com, which soon merged with PayPal, shoveling another $180 million into his piggy bank. Although it wasn't always smooth sailing for the tech mogul, in late 2008, Musk divorced his first wife and it nearly bankrupted him. He ran out of cash a year later and was forced to live off loans from friends in order to keep his companies afloat. Then came the game-changing moment. The moment after which Elon Musk's bank balance would skyrocket when Tesla debuted on the stock market in 2010. Elon Musk. Elon Musk? Yeah. Tesla Elon Musk? Yeah. Wow. However, Tesla was initially formed much earlier, back in 2003. It took the electric auto manufacturer five years to really make a statement in the industry. And that bold statement came in the form of the release of the Tesla Roadster, in the same year that Elon officially became CEO and product architect. With the company now thrust into the spotlight, Tesla managed to raise $226 million when it went public in 2010. Ever since, Musk has been funneling hundreds of millions of dollars back into the company as well as sacrificing his annual salaries. Through Tesla, Elon bought SolarCity for $2.6 billion worth of stock. He's continued to spearhead the growing brand with the hope to not only revolutionize the automotive industry, but to initiate a global movement away from polluting machinery. Tesla might be the most famous Musk-run company these days, but it's far from the only one. SpaceX, which is recently floating around the $44 billion value, has been making headlines for almost two decades. Perhaps none more impressive than being the first private company to send a space craft to the International Space Station. Back in 2014, Elon quietly opened his own school called Ad Astra, a progressive, essential learning institution for the children of SpaceX employees. Elon waived all the tuition fees and paid to bring over his kid's old teacher as well. The way of learning is far more hands-on and instructs the students to solve real-world problems which has been so well received that a universally accessible online school, Astronova, has sprouted as a result. Experimenting with AI certainly beats memorizing a boring textbook, that's for sure. Speaking of boring, there's one more company we've yet to mention. The Boring Company. Elon has raised and invested hundreds of millions of dollars for this tunneling and transportation startup since back in 2016. Where did the idea come from? Well, it was simple. He wanted a way to bypass the horrid Los Angeles traffic. Over the last two and a half decades, if he hasn't been spending his money creating his own companies, he's been investing into those of others. In 1998, Musk started his investing journey with Everdream Corporation, which was eventually sold to Dell. Thereafter, he funded a small satellite company called Surrey Satellite Technology, a question and answer site called Mahalo.com, the online payment company Stripe, multiple AI brands including OpenAI and DeepMind Technologies, and a DNA sequencing company Halcyon Molecular Incorporated, which turned out to be a failure. All up, the groundbreaking entrepreneur would have controlled hundreds of millions, potentially billions, into the emerging world of technology. Fortunately, not all of his money goes towards profit-seeking companies. 
When he's not compulsively working on his life goal of colonizing Mars, the Tesla CEO is making humble philanthropist donations. Much of these have been through his own so-called Musk Foundation, to which he has personally donated over $257 million so far. In 2015, he also donated $10 million to the Future of Life Institute. And there's plenty more where that came from. Elon has followed in the generous shoes of Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, having signed a giving pledge, meaning that most of his fortune will be left to charity. While most famous celebrities spend half of their time on vacation, cruising around on yachts, soaking in the sun, and gloating about it on social media, Elon's actually somewhat of a contrarian. He did buy a yacht called Mr. Steven, but that was solely for SpaceX purchases. He regularly works between 80 and 90 hours a week without any time for travel. Back in 2015, he admitted he'd only taken about two weeks off since founding SpaceX about 12 years earlier. Can you imagine not taking a vacation for over a decade? Just because he's not hitting up the Bahamas every Sunday doesn't mean that he isn't regularly flying through the skies, because he is, and he's doing so in sublime luxury. Musk owns two private planes, the more expensive of the pair being the $70 million 2015 Gulfstream G650ER. In 2017 alone, he flew more than 150,000 miles. Until teleportation is available, according to his Tesla employees, it's the best way for him to get around. Now cast your eye toward the Aero L39 Albatross, Musk's other plane. The same one that Russian military pilots use as trainers for flying fighter jets. The price for a good second-hand L-39 starts at around $250,000. But when you're as rich as Elon Musk, who has spent tens of billions across his career, that doesn't even make a dent. Elon Musk hasn't really had any time to work on creating an electric plane in the last decade. He's far too busy with his duties at Tesla and SpaceX. A hectic schedule isn't the only reason that Musk's plan for an eVTOL remains on the drawing board. Musk has been reluctant to develop an electric plane because he feels battery technology needs to significantly improve before eVTOLs become a viable form of transportation. However, that hasn't stopped Musk from dropping hints about a Tesla-made eVTOL. He first mentioned an electric plane in 2009, and he teased his plans for an eVTOL on Twitter just last year. Musk also mentioned his marvelous idea for an electric jet in the film Iron Man 2. His MCU cameo might be fiction, but a Musk-made eVTOL will one day be a reality. If Musk follows through with his plan to build an eVTOL, one thing is certain. It'll cost millions of dollars to develop. Most eVTOL prototypes cost between $10 and $20 million, and certification and initial production tooling is estimated to be between $150 million and $300 million per program. EVTOL leaders have raised millions in funding for their prospective prototypes, but it's possible that Musk could invest his own money into his design. Musk has invested hundreds of millions in SpaceX, Tesla, and Neuralink. He is not above spending his own money if he has a great idea. Musk says his electric plane could be just a few years away. He believes that all vehicles will be powered by electric batteries in the near future. The only exception would be rockets. As long as battery technology improves, we can expect to see Musk's eVTOL prototype in three to four years. Electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, or eVTOLs, are sometimes referred to as flying cars, but in reality, they are small electric planes that can hover and travel short distances. There has been tremendous progress in the eVTOL market in the last five years. Most of the prototypes that have been revealed so far are unmanned, but Japanese company SkyDrive, which is a startup that's partially backed by Toyota, made history this past summer with a successful piloted test flight. SkyDrive's SDO3 prototype took flight on August 25th at the Toyota test field in Toyota City, Japan. The piloted eVTOL prototype circled for about four minutes before landing safely back to the ground. Shortly after the successful test flight, SkyDrive secured $36.6 million in additional funding, and the company hopes to have safe and secure flying car operation services available in 2023. SkyDrive is unique in the world of eVTOLs, as most other prototypes are autonomous. It's extremely likely that Musk's eVTOL will be self-flying, as Tesla is on the verge of producing fully autonomous cars. Musk's plan to have an eVTOL prototype in three to four years hinges on one thing batteries. According to Musk, a futuristic zero-emissions jet would require a battery pack with a density of at least 400 watt-hours per kilogram. If battery density could reach 500 watt-hours per kilogram, that would be even better. Improved battery density is simply not enough for Musk. He wants better batteries to be produced in volume. An experimental battery made in a lab would not suffice. 
The Tesla Model 3's battery has a density of around 250 watt-hours per kilogram, so clearly more work needs to be done if Musk's dream of an electric jet is to become a reality. In layman's terms, battery density is the amount of energy each kilogram of battery can hold. When he appeared on Joe Rogan's podcast, Musk explained that a higher battery density is required to overcome gravity. Musk wants his electric plane to go as high as possible, so a greater energy density in the battery pack is vital to overcome gravitational potential energy. Musk says that the energy an eVTOL uses while cruising is very low, and that his eVTOL will be able to recapture a large amount of gravitational potential energy on the way down. Therefore, reserve fuel is not necessary. The initial takeoff phase is the challenging part. Flying and landing should be a piece of cake. We don't know what Musk's eVTOL would look like, but there has been plenty of speculation. Tesla fanboy and UK-based industrial designer Tom Abbott Davies posted a mock-up of a Tesla Model V eVTOL concept on Twitter earlier this year. The stylish design even caught Musk's attention. Quote, looks pretty cool, wrote Musk. Elon Musk is losing the eVTOL race, there's no doubt about it. He doesn't even have a prototype yet. Musk could come from behind and win, but he will have to defeat eVTOL leaders like Airbus, Boeing, Kitty Hawk, and Lilium. European multinational aerospace corporation Airbus performed a successful eVTOL test flight last year. The unmanned city Airbus prototype made its first tethered flight on May 3, 2019 in Dunnerworth, Germany. The all-electric aircraft runs on four 800-volt batteries that power four sets of paired counter-rotating props inside aerodynamic ducts fixed to the fuselage. City Airbus was designed to be used as an urban air taxi and can reach speeds of 120 kilometers per hour. In December, the City Airbus made its first untethered test flight, but the City Airbus is still just a part of a demonstrator program. When Airbus begins production on its eVTOL, it could look drastically different from the City Airbus prototype. Lilium is another leader in the eVTOL marketplace. The Munich-based startup recently raised an additional $240 million to fund its eVTOL program. Lilium hopes to achieve its goal of regional air mobility by 2025. Despite the company's success, there have been some setbacks. Lilium has had numerous successful test flights with its eVTOL prototypes. The company originally produced two prototypes, but one caught on fire in February during maintenance work. Thankfully, Lilium's remaining eVTOL prototype is still in working order. Lilium's Jet eVTOL prototype uses a distributed energy propulsion platform and sports 36 ducted fans for vectored thrust flight. Jet has a projected range of up to 300 kilometers and a top speed just under 300 kilometers per hour. Lilium's valuation could be as high as $1 billion, and the company has major backers including Chinese tech conglomerate Tencent and investment firm Bailey Gifford, which is coincidentally Tesla's third largest shareholder. Once widely adopted, eVTOLs will predominantly be used as short-range air taxis in urban centers. They could also be used as air ambulances and could even have military applications. Long-range flights are more difficult, but Chinese heavy drone company Autoflight has developed a hybrid VTOL with a range of 1,000 kilometers. Uber is working with numerous eVTOL companies to develop an air taxi service through its Uber Elevate program. Uber Elevate partners include Boeing, Hyundai, and Bell. The International Civil Aviation Organization is working on a project called Ambular, which is an eVTOL designed for use as an air ambulance. Major Ambular partners including Chinese AAV developer Ehang and the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. eVTOLs could also be used as search and rescue vehicles. ADAC Luftertung Air Rescue in Germany has been studying the feasibility of using volocopter eVTOLs in rescue operations. eVTOLs could reduce transit time and save lives. The faster a patient can be flown to the hospital, the better. eVTOLs could even be used in agriculture. Volocopter has developed a Volo drone based on its eVTOL air taxi. The drone is powered by 18 rotors with an overall diameter of 9.2 meters and can carry a payload of up to 200 kilograms. Volo drone would be ideal for spraying crops and sowing seeds. There are literally hundreds of uses for eVTOLs. Most people think eVTOLs will only be used as air taxis, but the truth is, the possibilities are endless. Oh, you heard that right. It's a ginormous golden asteroid whizzing around our solar system with an orbit that's the equivalent of about five Earth years. And with asteroids becoming legal to own in 2016, you better believe that wealthy celebrities have already taken an interest. It seems it's only a matter of time before someone gets up there and becomes really, really rich. Here's some stats about everyone's favorite soft metal and why you should be interested. If you're trying to invest your hard-earned money, one of the safest bets is buying gold. In fact, this past July in 2020, prices per ounce of gold climbed up to $1,800 per ounce. This is the highest gold has been since September of 2011. 
And frankly, the uncertainty that this year has brought and most likely will continue to bring. Did y'all forget the United States is also holding its presidential election in only a few short months? Who knows what will happen? But one thing is for certain, and that is statistics. Gold is on the rise, with an estimated 19% rise in value this year alone. Things are looking pretty darn good for gold, aren't they? Well, until you throw in a curveball that most investors aren't thinking of. And by curveball, we actually mean a gigantic 173 mile by 144 mile wide massive ball of metal. We want to introduce you to the M-type asteroid 16 Psyche. It's shaped like your standard potato. However, it's much, much bigger and made of stuff that is much more valuable. See, the reason that it is called an M-type asteroid is this. The majority of its composition is metallic meaning that it is mostly made of metals like iron and nickel, commonly found here on Earth. Ah, but the metals don't stop there. Scientists have discovered that 16 Psyche is also compromised of mind-boggling amounts of gold and heaps of platinum. Just how much are these metals worth? Try this on for size. 16 Psyche, if mined, would yield 10,000 quadrillion dollars. That's 19 zeros, people. So what is this floating fortune doing floundering through our favorite neighborhood, the solar system? Scientists believe that this is actually the leftover remnants of the core of a planet. They think that this planet must have formed around the time that our solar system was taking shape, and through massive amounts of collisions from heavenly bodies that took place billions of years ago. These collisions could have been asteroids, moons, other planets, comets, and more. And before long, the rocky surface was chipped away, and slowly but surely, all that was left was this incredibly dense and metallic core. It is also speculated that this planet was probably the size of Mars at least. Now you may be wondering, how in the heck can we know all this about a giant rock that, at its maximum distance, is 497 million miles from the Sun? That's 3.3 astronomical units for all of you out there in the know. For those that don't, a single astronomical unit is the equivalent of the distance from the Earth to the Sun. So yeah, this asteroid is far out there. But by studying it through both the visible and infrared spectrum, as well as using radar, they can get a surprisingly accurate portrait of what it looks like, what it's made of, and more. They can even figure out it takes 4 hours for 16 Psyche to rotate on its axis. Compared to the 24 hours it takes here on Earth, this baby is spinning at super speeds. But even with all this incredible information, there is only so much you can learn from observing at such a long distance away. Which is why scientists at NASA are very interested in sending a probe up to 16 Psyche. Mainly because they believe, by studying what is thought to be an exposed planet core, they will learn more about Earth, and get even more information on what it was like in the early years during the formation of our solar system and planet. And due to the asteroid being not too far away, after all, it's located right between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. It has already been announced that they will be able to launch a rocket in August of 2022, and the company behind the launch will be none other than SpaceX. Once up there, the real fun will begin, and by using a ton of incredibly advanced instruments, like a gamma ray and neutron spectrometer, we will get an even more detailed and accurate look at just what this giant golden potato is made of. Who knows? We may find that there is even more gold than we thought. But why stop there? Who is to say there couldn't be diamonds too? Diamonds! Diamonds, don't you see? Diamonds will make everything all better! <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, we're just, uh, we're huge Simpsons fans here. Looks like we won't know for sure until the craft arrives at its far-off destination by the year 2026. Once it arrives, it is slated to remain in orbit for 21 months. This will be quite a historic mission as well, due to the fact that this will be the first time that we will be investigating a heavenly body that is not made of rock and ice. Oh yeah, you heard that right. Up till this mission, there hasn't been any rocket sent to probe any metallic object in our solar system. It's truly a legendary endeavor, and we as a species will have taken leaps forward in finding not only our place in the world, but our place in the universe. It's a fantastic time to be alive. But look, that's all well and good, learning about where we came from is great and all, but uh, the truth of the matter is, this is a giant piece of gold flying through space worth quadrillions of dollars. We want to know if someone can mine this bad boy. Let's split the pot. No one would ever starve again, and we could all have giant mansions just like the richest here on Earth. Right? Well, here's the thing. First of all, if this asteroid were to be mined, it would be absolutely devastating to our economy. We're talking really, really bad. Not just bad like at the end of Trading Spaces bad, but monstrously, unfathomably, world-cripplingly bad. Without a doubt, this would occur all over the world, and to everyone. 
basically all money would devalue almost instantly, and that includes the money held by the governments of the world. So yes, technically there would be enough gold to go around to make every single person a billionaire, but remember, when everyone is a billionaire, no one is. But that doesn't mean that private investors and companies aren't interested in getting up there and taking a swing at the potato-shaped fortune. In fact, everyone's favorite billionaire, Elon Musk, not to mention the man behind SpaceX, has sent out some rather coy tweets hinting that he would be very interested in mining 16 Psyche. See, this idea is nothing new. The one that says there is a wealth of gold to be mined up in the heavens? In fact, there are two companies called Deep Space Industries and Planetary Resources that are backed by big-name celebs, and these companies are specifically geared towards mining and extracting gold from asteroids in our solar system. They've even been eyeing another asteroid, known as 2011 UW-158 asteroid. And while it's nowhere near the levels of wealth contained on 16 Psyche, this floating gold mine is twice the size of the Tower of London and still worth an approximate $5.7 trillion. No wonder people are scrambling to get up there. Which brings us back to Mr. Musk, who, when asked if he would comment on the idea of him mining the gold in asteroids due to gold not having a fixed supply, he simply tweeted the word Psyche and linked to an article by Fox News stating the gold up there would make everyone on Earth a billionaire. Touché, Mr. Musk. Touché. <laughs> so, looks like the rich are just going to get richer and richer and richer until, well, they mine the gold from the asteroids, crash the world's economy, spiral life as we know it into oblivion, and watch as we all have to pick up the pieces. Oh wait, that sounds eerily similar to 2020 already, everyone's favorite year. And yes, we mean that with as much sarcasm as we can muster, people. Hey, you know what? We say, go for it. Bring that gold down from the heavens and let us all be billionaires for a day. We've always wanted to know what it would be like to own a super yacht or a private jet or any Lamborghini we've ever wanted anyway. The rich have had their time. Let's even things out and start over anew with everyone swimming in their own pile of money a la Scrooge McDuck. As Jesse Pinkman would say, Yes, science! Seems that space is filled with far more than just, well, empty space. Yes, it's cold and dark and frankly, if you were up there, most of the time, you would just be trying to keep yourself busy as you floated endlessly through the pitch-black blanket that is its infinite majesty. But at the same time, this vast cosmic void is teeming with mysteries and adventures just waiting to be had. Not to mention incredible riches to be mined for those brave enough and, let's face it, rich enough to strap on a spacesuit and fly out there. For now, though, it seems Mr. Musk is content just looking at the aforementioned shiny asteroid, even though he certainly hinted at having interest in sending up a mining mission. But I guess when you're worth $78.2 billion, you don't really need a giant golden asteroid. But the rest of us? Yeah, we do. Stay in school, learn science, and design that perfect spaceship that can mine this baby. You'll be richer than anyone else in humanity's history. Hey, looks like being a nerd pays off. Thanks for sticking around and watching today's video. It was a blast making it, and we love serving you all the latest gossip on the ultra-rich and incredibly wealthy. After all, it doesn't look like any of us are going to be quite as rich as the billionaires of the world anytime soon, which means we certainly aren't going to have enough to mine these massive golden asteroids. So we might as well live vicariously through the people who can. Elon Musk describes Neuralink as a Fitbit in your skull with tiny wires. Musk's ultimate goal for Neuralink is to achieve a full brain-machine interface that will reach symbiosis with artificial intelligence. Basically, he wants humans to be as smart as computers. Eventually, artificial intelligence will evolve and leave humans in the dust. Wait, what? Neuralink might help us keep up. Neuralink is ambitious, but there are many things that Musk's brain chip will be able to do very soon. People suffering from neurological conditions like paralysis, seizures, brain damage, and even depression might be able to use Neuralink to lead more normal lives. Neuralink could do away with the need for medication and physical therapy altogether. Human trials have not yet started, but when they do, the first challenge will be having a paraplegic operate an iPhone or making mouse clicks on a computer without any physical movement. Neuralink may seem seem like something created by a mad genius, but the science behind this innovative brain chip is not new at all. Scientists have been developing brain-machine interfaces for over 50 years. The earliest brain-machine interfaces allowed people to operate mechanical arms and move virtual cursors. The Utah Array, which is currently undergoing clinical trials, is the only brain-machine interface that's currently approved by the Food and Drug Administration. It uses a 1mm implant with 100 electrodes that can stimulate the user's brain. Doctors 
researchers have been using deep brain stimulation to treat patients suffering from Parkinson's for decades. A neurostimulator, sometimes referred to as a brain pacemaker, is used to send electrical pulses to certain parts of a patient's brain via implanted electrodes. If you decide one day to have a Neuralink chip installed into your brain, you should be aware that the procedure won't be completed by a doctor or scientist. Rather, a Neuralink chip will be installed via an expensive sewing robot. Neuralink's first human-embedded chip prototype was the Neuralink N1 sensor, and it was extremely tiny. Including the outer mold, the N1 sensor was just 8 millimeters in diameter and 4 millimeters tall with 1,024 extremely tiny electrodes. Earlier this year, Musk unveiled a brand new prototype that looks like a coin. The Link V0.9 chip also has 1,024 electrodes, but the new chip is slightly larger at 23 millimeters by 8 millimeters. The V0.9 has all-day battery life and is inductively charged. To recharge, you simply need to plug a dongle into an outlet and let the chip power up while you sleep. The electrodes in the V0.9 implant are tiny microscopic threads that are 10 times thinner than a strand of human hair. The electrodes are so small that it would be impossible for a human to install them. That's where Neuralink's futuristic robot surgeon comes in. The Neuralink surgical robot, which was designed by Woke Studios, has a sleek look like an Apple device. The Neuralink robot surgeon will sew the chip's electrodes into your brain with perfect accuracy. There won't even be any bleeding. The good news is that the procedure won't hurt a bit because the brain does not have pain receptors. The layers of tissue between the brain and skull can feel pain, but not the brain itself. That's why brain surgeons can operate on people when they're awake. One patient even played guitar while surgeons removed a brain tumor. Musk says the surgery will only take an hour and anesthesia wouldn't be needed. The patient could be in and out of the hospital in a day. The N1 sensor chip required a piece of wearable tech that would sit behind your ear and hold the Neuralink battery. The V0.9 chip is all one piece. There is no exterior portion, and no one would even be able to tell that you had one in your head, except for a tiny scar from the installation surgery. Needless to say, it's a huge upgrade. Whenever Elon Musk comes up with an innovative idea, you know it's going to cost a lot of money, and Neuralink is no exception. The Neuralink robotic surgeon alone costs $20 million to build, and Musk has pumped $100 million of his own money into the company. Neuralink has received about $158 million in funding so far, and with that money, Musk has been able to hire profile neuroscientists and develop the costly robot neurosurgeon. If you're worried that having a chip implanted in your brain would put strain on your wallet, don't be. Neuralink will be a costly procedure when it's first introduced to the public, but Musk hopes to get the price down to a few thousand dollars. That includes the cost of the chip and the surgery. Luckily, the parts used to make the chips aren't particularly expensive, and many of the same materials are used to make smartphones. Would you pay for a Neuralink chip if it was cheaper than an iPhone? It doesn't take a genius like Musk to see the potential in Neuralink. Elon Musk wants to sell a Neuralink chip to anyone who wants one. Don't worry, Musk isn't forcing you to have a chip implanted into your brain. It may seem like Musk wants to take over the world, but he's not going to go that far. Musk has warned about the dangers of AI for many years, and he views Neuralink as a last line of defense against an AI uprising. Some may welcome our new AI overlords, but Musk isn't going to let computers enslave us. It might seem far-fetched, but Musk really believes that a Skynet-like AI might take over the world. He says an evolving AI is a greater threat to humanity than nuclear weapons. Neuralink might prevent Terminator 2 Judgment Day from becoming a reality. The only way we can defeat highly intelligent computers is if we are as smart as they are. Neuralink might give us a chance. There are many more potential uses for Neuralink, and most aren't as scary as the last line of defense against an evil AI. Neuralink could make iPhones and all other wearables obsolete, communicating telepathically, buying something online with merely a thought, and augmented reality video games might all be possible with Neuralink. Neuralink isn't advanced enough to do any of this yet, but who knows what the future holds? If Neuralink does allow us to communicate telepathically, it'll be much faster than a phone call or text message. Thoughts are instantaneous, but our current methods of communication are limited to how fast we can speak or type. Neuralink raises many ethical questions. Many are concerned about the potential dangers of this technology. There is a risk that Neuralink could be hacked, allowing someone to completely control a person who has the implant. A hacker could also potentially shut down the chip until the user pays a ransom. There's also concerns of inequality. How will a person with an implant differ from a person without one? 
Neuralink could make a person smarter or stronger, which would be unfair to those who don't have an implant or can't afford one. People with implants may be favored for jobs, loans, or even housing. There is also a risk that companies could send advertisements directly into your brain, but Musk says he is against such a development. There's also the possibility that people could become addicted to the chips and not be able to function without one. So how long will we have to wait for Neuralink to be available? A lot of the potential uses for Neuralink are a long way away. But 2020 has been very good for the company. In August, Musk showed Neuralink in action when he unveiled a pig that had the VO.9 chip implanted in her brain. During the tech demo, which was live streamed on YouTube, Musk demonstrated how Neuralink tracked Gertrude, the pig's, brain activity. As Gertrude moved around her pen, ate straw, and sniffed things with her snout, Musk displayed her brain activity via a graph on a screen. Last year, Neuralink installed a chip into the brain of a monkey and was able to get the monkey to control a computer with its brain. Neuralink has recently been approved as a breakthrough device by the FDA. While this is not the same as full FDA approval, it means that FDA approval could be fast-tracked. Musk wants to start human trials as early as this year, but now 2021 seems much more likely. Would you be willing to be Musk's guinea pig? I know I wouldn't. Not even if he offered me a free Cybertruck. Nope. Neuralink has come a long way since Musk founded the company in 2016. In the next four years, we could see Neuralink reach new heights and make some staggering breakthroughs. Successful human trials are just a matter of time. Neuralink gets a lot of press because it's the brainchild, no pun intended, of Elon Musk. However, there are many other companies developing similar chips. Even Facebook is getting in on the action. Brain-computer interface startup CTRL Labs was purchased by Facebook last year for about $1 billion. The company is building software that would let users control a digital avatar using only their thoughts. Will we one day live in a world where Facebook has access to not only our private data but our thoughts, too? A brain-machine interface can be invasive or non-invasive. Not every company wants to install brain chips like Neuralink. Mindex is developing a pair of smart glasses that will allow users to access information with a single thought. Likewise, Nextmind developed a wearable device that allows users to change TV channels with just their thoughts. Nectome is working on tech that will preserve memories. The company wants to upload a person's brain waves into the cloud, but there's a catch. For the procedure to work, Netcomb needs a living brain and the process kills the patient. The fatal mind uploading service would be similar Similar to the service shown on the Amazon show Upload or the Black Mirror episode San Junipero. More proof that science fiction eventually becomes science fact. That's it, folks. Do you think Neuralink will be commonplace in the future? Ah, scared. Are you going to pay thousands to have a robot implant a chip in your brain? Do you think the chip could turn us into superhumans? Do you think Neuralink will help us keep up with AI and prevent a Terminator-esque apocalyptic future? The next 40 to 50 years of space travel could be very exciting. Companies with billions of dollars of funding are looking to the stars. Many companies want to send travelers to space. But it's not just space tourism that will be a pivotal part of the billionaire space race. Both Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos want to send astronauts back to the moon. The next step after that is Mars, and then space colonization. Bezos is pouring billions of money into his space exploration company Blue Origin, and Elon Musk is making tremendous strides via his company SpaceX. Musk wants to build a megacity on Mars, and Bezos envisions a plethora of floating space colonies. This may all seem very sci-fi, but Musk and Bezos want it to become science fact. They might just succeed thanks to their incredible wealth. SpaceX has come a long way since Elon Musk founded the company all the way back in 2002. The company has grown into a multi-billion dollar enterprise, and Elon Musk's net worth has skyrocketed as well. Today, Musk is worth about $88.7 billion, and SpaceX is one of the reasons why he's so rich. SpaceX is just one of Musk's many ventures, but it's possible the company could be far more valuable than the Boring Company or Tesla in the future. Morgan Stanley estimates that SpaceX is currently worth about $46 to $50 billion, but the company could be worth as much as $200 billion in the near future thanks to major projects like Starlink. Starlink, which is SpaceX's $10 billion satellite internet constellation, could make Musk even richer than he is today. Numerous companies and private investors are flocking to SpaceX. SpaceX has signed lucrative contracts with both NASA and the U.S. Department of Defense. During a recent fundraising push, SpaceX secured $1.9 billion in additional investment, which is one of the largest single fundraising pushes by any company in history. 
Musk and SpaceX have garnered $1.1 billion worth of defense contracts from the U.S. government since 2002, including a $149 million contract to build missile tracking satellites for the military. SpaceX's recent successful Crew Dragon mission, which marked the first time a private company sent astronauts into space, wouldn't have been possible without a $3.1 billion investment from NASA. SpaceX is working closely with NASA to get astronauts back to the moon by 2024. NASA's $1 billion Artemis program is extremely ambitious. NASA awarded SpaceX a $135 million contract to help get astronauts on the moon again. But SpaceX isn't the only company partnering with NASA in the Artemis program. Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin is working closely with NASA, too. Jeff Bezos is the richest person in the world with a net worth of about $187.5 billion. But his company, Blue Origin, could one day be worth much more than that. Today, Bezos is primarily focused on growing Amazon, but that could all change as the billionaire space race heats up. Bezos is putting a lot of his own money into Blue Origin, and he reportedly sells $1 billion worth of Amazon stock every year to help fund Blue Origin. Blue Origin was founded in 2000, and there are a few ways the company differs from Musk's SpaceX. Blue Origin is heavily involved in space tourism, but that's not the main focus of SpaceX. Musk is the current CEO of SpaceX, but Bezos merely founded Blue Origin. The companies do have much in common, though. They compete heavily for defense contracts and space exploration contracts. Like SpaceX, Blue Origin has a lucrative contract with NASA. SpaceX may be winning the space race, but as far as the Artemis program goes, Blue Origin has the edge. NASA awarded Blue Origin $579 million to develop human lunar landers for the program's moon missions. That's more money than SpaceX has received so far, but the program could cost as much as $18.4 billion by 2024. So there's much more cash to hand out. Blue Origin received $500 million from the U.S. Air Force to develop the new Glenn rocket, which was intended to be used for security missions. However, However, the U.S. Air Force favored SpaceX and ULA in the second phase of the military's National Security Space Launch Program, which was a devastating blow to Bezos and another notch in the win column for Musk and SpaceX. Blue Origin is rapidly expanding, so the battle isn't over yet. Blue Origin operates a $205 million, 750,000 square foot manufacturing facility in Merritt Island, Florida, and the company recently unveiled a $200 million rocket engine factory in Huntsville, Alabama, dubbed Rocket City, earlier this year. Year. Jeff Bezos may be far richer than Musk, but there is no question that SpaceX is beating Blue Origin in the billionaire space race. However, it's important to remember that the USSR beat the USA into space, and we all know how that turned out. The Yanks beat the Soviets to the moon, so don't count out Bezos just yet. He may be losing to Musk right now, but that could certainly change. The successful launch of the SpaceX Crew Dragon space vehicle via the Falcon 9 rocket back in May put Musk way ahead of Bezos. SpaceX made headlines around the world when the Crew Dragon C-206 Endeavour spacecraft carried NASA astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Behnken into orbit for a rendezvous with the International Space Station. The manned mission marked the first time a crewed orbital space flight was completed by a private company, and the mission was the first time a crewed vehicle has flown from U.S. soil since NASA ended the space shuttle program in 2011. Blue Origin has yet to achieve anywhere near this level of success, but there is hope on the horizon. Blue Origin has launched the new Shepard rocket, which is a vertical takeoff, vertical landing spacecraft into space numerous times. The rocket is crew rated, and the eventual goal is to put humans on board. Blue Origin believes only a few more test flights are needed before the goal is achieved. This is just the first phase of the billionaire space race. Musk and Bezos have very different long-term goals. Jeff Bezos wants to have a fleet of floating space colonies, while Elon Musk wants to build a megacity on the surface of Mars. Both these goals seem absolutely far-fetched, but if the rate of innovation is accelerated, then both these concepts could become reality. Bezos' version of space is heavily inspired by American physicist Gerald K. O'Neill and his 1976 book The High Frontier, Human Colonies in Space. Bezos admits that the plan will take generations to achieve, but his bold vision of a future in space could one day happen. Even if it takes hundreds of years. Bezos wants Blue Origin to build giant space colonies that could sustain millions of people. He foresees a future where as many as one trillion people live in millions of space colonies. Bezos says that each of these giant space stations could be vastly different. Some could be space hotels, and others could be nature preserves. Some might be modeled after historic Earth cities, while others could be dedicated to farming. These giant space colonies would be miles long and rotate to induce artificial gravity. They would be so large that the internet 
International Space Station would look like a speck of dust in comparison. Of course, it will take a lot of resources to operate these massive space colonies. Bezos expects the resources like water and minerals could come from the moon or nearby asteroids. You might think that Bezos wants to abandon Earth, but that's not the case. He believes that the Earth could flourish and be overtaken by nature once most people move to these giant space colonies. Musk's goal of building a city on Mars seems much more feasible than Bezos' plan for space colonies. Musk believes that a city could be built on Mars as early as the 2030s, but there is still a lot of work to be done for that to become a reality. Before a city can be built on Mars, we have to get there first. Musk has a detailed plan for sending people to Mars, and it all hinges on SpaceX's Starship. Previously called the Big Falcon rocket, SpaceX's Starship is a fully reusable two-stage-to-orbit super heavy-lift launch vehicle that SpaceX has been designing since 2012. Musk is 80-90% to 90 confident that Starship will reach orbit next year, and he hopes to be able to transport cargo to Mars via Starship as early as 2022. Summer 2022 would be an ideal launch window, as Mars will be closer to Earth during this period. By 2024, Musk wants to send SpaceX's Starship to Mars with 100 tons of supplies, as well as a group of people. If all goes according to plan, humans could set foot on Mars by 2025. However, before any of this is possible, Starship has to undergo rigorous tests flights. Musk expects to lose a few ships and maybe some boosters in the process. The entire endeavor will cost billions, but no one ever said progress was cheap. You might one day be able to set foot on Mars yourself, but Musk says it will cost a lot. He wants to send as many as 1 million people to Mars, and tickets could cost as much as $200,000. Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos are the big names in the billionaire space race, but they're not the only ones with grand ambitions of space exploration and development. They may be the leaders, but the field is wide open and there is plenty of competition. British billionaire Richard Branson is the brains behind Virgin Galactic and Virgin Orbit. He's focusing on space tourism via low-cost small orbital launchers and intercontinental sub orbital transit. Russian billionaire Yuri Milner is heavily invested in the Breakthrough Starshot project, which he founded with Mark Zuckerberg and the late Stephen Hawking. The project aims to produce a fleet of light sail spacecrafts capable of interstellar flight. These spacecrafts will be known as space probes, and the eventual goal of the Breakthrough Starshot project is to have the ships travel to Proxima Centauri b, which is 4.2 light years from Earth. That's it, folks. Are you excited about the future of space exploration? Do you think Jeff Bezos will be able to catch up to Elon Musk in the billionaire space race? Would you like to live on a Mars megacity built by Elon Musk, or would you rather spend your days relaxing in one of Bezos' space colonies? Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.